Garantor Castle stands busier than ever before. New recruits, some battle-hardened, others fresh from their parents' embrace, train under the oppressive heat of the sun as their new lord watches. The garrison of Garantor was strengthened, yes, but not by nearly enough. And meanwhile, Charus and Thraktorae Castle stand exposed, naked as a babe at birth, undefended, and ripe for attack from multiple sides. Missives from the Council urge Partia to seek out local recruits, if only temporarily, and while he certainly intends to do so, his first task remains to raise more Asurai soldiers. When Partia holds against the inevitable tide of Unkid, he must hold at the side of Asurai. And when Partia marches forth like a desert storm, he must march at the side of Asurai. Perception, Partia knows, is a powerful tool, and if he intends to stand against Unkid, his opposers must see Partia not as a foreigner, but as a lord of their own. Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you back to another chapter in the adventures of Partia al it in Bannerlord. As the war to the east rages on against the Kuzate, the war in our hero's heart continues as well. Yes, though the decision has been made, it is not an easy decision to live by, and each day as the sun rises and sets, Partia questions his motives and his will. Oh, how he wishes he could simply obey the commands of the Sultan, how he wishes he could blindly serve. But alas, Partia al-It realizes he never intended to simply serve one man, no. Partia serves above the Sultan, the people of the Asurai. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Bannerlord. Can you imagine thinking about abandoning your liege lord? Can you imagine what's going through Partia's head? It's not an easy place to be. Life has been so easy. The Asurai have been doing so well. War has been you know, fought off offenders and, and, and conquerors, would-be conquerors, have been defended against, uh, the, the backing of an entire court. The Sultan likes Partia. This hatred is uh, mostly, at least as far as we know, in one direction because of, you know, foolish move after foolish move, uh, foolish decree after foolish decree. But a life of ease must often be given up, I suppose, and that's exactly what Partia is setting up to do. It's going to be an interesting session, folks, as we continue to raise our strength. Garantor Castle, you know, a little bit stronger now, a garrison of almost 120. We can try and bring that up to at least, you know, 300 before we look elsewhere. But yes, Thraktorae Castle and Charas also will need defending. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and do a little bit of management here first uh, before we move on. I just want to mention before we start that, folks, if you've been enjoying this series and you'd like to see it continue, please don't hesitate to let me know. And as always, the best way to make sure that I know is by leaving a like and a comment down below. Now, with that said, uh, first things first, I'm going to go to the dungeon and manage the prisoners. Something excellent was brought up in the comments. Again, a great reason to comment is because I actually read through all the comments <laughs> and I let it affect, affect how I uh, approach things. So it was pointed out that I've got so many prisoners that are just sitting around doing nothing. And what I could actually do, well, hmm, unfortunately, I can't quite do it now. Uh, I need bigger numbers. But what I'd like to do is pick up some prisoners, ride around with them, and then recruit from that pool as I go around as well. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do, actually, is, if we take a look at my party, I think I've got a decent enough, well, fair number of low-tier troops, actually. I was going to say, I think I've got a decent enough collection of troops to go in and take care of the bandits in the nearby uh, neighborhood. This hideout over here, uh, let's at least go check it out, because uh, I want to see if we can't take care of that, because it's been harassing some of my uh, places. Uh, and I want to get to Charas first as it is. What I want to do is I want to go to Charas. I want to pick up our uh, companion over there. And I want to ride around with him and have him train up in battle as well. Because otherwise, when it comes time to campaign with me, sure, he'll be a great engineer. But he'll be useless on the battlefield. And I cannot quite afford that. I need everybody to be a capable fighter. Uh, on top of that, it has been pointed out that uh, our good friend... Oops, sorry. Our good friend um, Valdim is still, well, he's not with us, but he is still in captivity 
uh, with the Kuzate. And this is my one big concern about sending folks like Arwa out. I don't want her to get captured. Uh, but once, uh, once Dula's gaining skills, good. Once uh, Valden breaks free, we will uh, bring him back to our party, have him journey to us rather than chase after him if he's too far away. And we should be able to uh, send him forth again, maybe give him some more troops to, to bring with him. Um, but but yeah, sorry. I want to go to Charis. I want to pick up our companion there, and then I want to continue all this campaigning and training. Uh, still can't see how many folks here. I also want to see... I want to do a quick survey of what's going on in our lands. That's one thing that... Wait, seriously? There's only four of them? No way. This hideout that used to have... like, Well, it's not the same one, because we cleared out that old one. I mean, sure, let's dive on in. Um, but, but before we do, just want to quickly mention, I want to do a quick survey because I realize that I don't actually fully know the details of our situation. I want to see the numbers at Charas, the numbers at Thraktory Castle. It's in our natural path anyway. And when it comes time for war, the first thing we're going to have to make a move against is Ortizia and perhaps even Aristocoris. Our first move, as much as I'd love it to be against Tubilis and Kuyaz, which I don't know if I mentioned last session, but that's been what I've been thinking um, as much as I'd love that to be our first move, we should secure our northern borders first, so to speak. We should secure our foothold on this side of the sea first and then venture south because we don't want to be down here only to be, you know, attacked through Oristocora's castle or something like that. Um, and I, I think that's the way to go. And if we're fortunate, then the Asteri will be pushed back up over here as well. Looks like Lavenia Castle is under siege. The Kuzate seem to be doing quite well. And as much as it hurts to see the Asteri lose territory, it's for the greater good of the Asteri after all. Anyway, enough talk about our planning. Uh, let's dive on into the hideout here. If there's only four of them, then you know what? Sure, no matter what I walk in with, I should be able to overpower them. In fact, let's take a look at our inventory and quickly just swap in our bow and arrow. We are on foot, yes. That's good. I want to make sure I'm walking around everywhere. I'm trying to improve my uh, athleticism, right? So let's, let's stay on top of that. Uh, and one thing I should actually do is, as I give myself uh, the right equipment here, yeah, uh, I should give Elkiria a better bow as well. Like, we've got this uh, woodland longbow, which is better in every way except for speed and accuracy. Um, you know, I think that's fine. Let's go ahead and give her the woodland longbow. And can she actually get better arrows as well? Yes, she can. Good. Well, let's get her using better equipment, right? And this session, what I'm going, I'm going to start actually trading out some of my equipment this session, but it's not going to be as I previously explained or, or described it because there are, uh, there's a better approach to it. And I'll, I'll explain that when we get to it. But for now, let's go ahead and take care of this hideout. It'll improve our relations with the folks around us. We have to wait until nightfall, unfortunately, but that's not the end of the world. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, go ahead and do that. As soon as nightfall happens, we will strike. And that should be quite good for us. Now, one more thing that I, I want to consider is where I'm taking care of bandits. I want to, as I mentioned earlier, continue recruiting Asurai soldiers so that I feel like the lord of the Asurai still. Uh, but perhaps the bandits, the bandits that we take care of are bandits of the north. So that when war breaks out, the Asurai still have to deal with bandits in their, old la their own lands. Sorry. Anyway, for now, let's stay focused over here. Let's attack this hideout. Um, hopefully, <laughs> we won't suffer horribly. I mean, I was expecting to need to go back and pick out better troops. Oh, it's just the commander? No way. <laughs> I thought it'd be four plus the commander. Oh, well, this isn't too bad. This isn't too bad. I don't fight duels with brigands. I, <laughs> I've got a sweat. What? <laughs> this isn't contextually correct at all. I don't fight duels with brigands. Prepare to die, you fool. All right. Make sure these archers don't finish any of our troops off. There we go. Oh, are you serious? Oh, he's just wounded. He's just wounded. Yes, we have one. Wow. Well, that was uh, easy. I think we lost. Ah, two people got injured. That's fine. No one even had a chance to level up or anything. But hey, we cleared out a camp. That'll actually help our relations with the folks in the area as well. And I will take on the forest bandit prisoner. Don't mind if I do. Good stuff. That is almost all the prisoners we can have. All right, cool. Done here. Gain some influence and gain some reputation as well, if I'm not mistaken, right? Sure. I think that'll include... No. It, so, uh, to those of you in the comments who say this helps with relations, if I'm not mistaken, it only helps with relations with notables. 
So that means like the individuals at Usank Castle and Gamardan and stuff, they like me more now. Uh, not the owners of the fiefs, like the, the nobles in charge or anything like that. All right, head on over to Charas over here. And I'm, I, I could just pick up recruits for the sake of picking up recruits. In fact, if I have some decent recruits available at 7th and Vesson, maybe I'll just drop them off at Charas. Because we have improved relations with folks here. Look at that. Like, that's not bad. Now, to be fair, most of these guys shouldn't be just garrisons, but they'll be troops that I'll have easy access to uh, should I suffer losses, right? Well, let's uh, let's go to Vesson first as well. It's funny how close I have to be to, to see the garrison of my own holdings. 64 is really not that great. Another thing I'm going to adjust in my approach is how previously I was very focused on um, how many... Uh, how many? Yeah, I should have just pick them up and drop them off at Charis. Uh, yeah, previously I was very much focused on our militia size. But the thing is, you really have to balance food, prosperity, and militia. More prosperity means more militia, but more prosperity also means less food, which is a problem. Less food means prosperity and militia both drop. So I'm going to actually focus on irrigation now. Um, irrigation should help keep food up in the case or in the event of a siege. Um, and... Our militia doesn't matter as much anymore because we're actually going to be building a proper garrison instead. And that garrison needs food as well, hence the focus on irrigation. The garrison barracks continues to be built 17 days until complete. I mean, I could dump some more money into this because I don't intend on leaving Dorian behind anymore. So let's go ahead and just dump, what, 2,000? Okay, we can, maybe we can, we can dump one. Let's dump another 4K. Bring us to a nice round number here. 4K-ish, I guess. There we go. Eight days for completion. That's fine by me. The garrison capacity doesn't matter just quite yet. Dorian, come with me. Hang on. Wow, look at that difference. It does make a big difference. From 8 days to 10 days. It, uh, okay, it, it makes a decent sized difference, but that's that's no big deal. Uh, now there's a tanner here as well as a clother. Is it a clothier or a clother? I've never known. Um, so what I'm thinking is I'll buy that tanner as well. It's been suggested in the comments that tanners make decent money uh which is something i could very much use right now all right some more spots for prisoners that's because we picked up some recruits right uh, let's go ahead and level you up buddy let's go ahead and manage the garrison over here really quickly um go to the keep manage the garrison dorian i need to speak to him to bring him in i mean yeah again this is not the worst garrison uh let's leave you behind to train up slowly but surely sure do I just dump all six of them off? They're so low tier. Drop some of these cavalry units off for sure. Don't need them coming with me. We'll train these guys up. Alright, cool. We'll train these guys up. That's fine. Dorian, a cure to party. He'll join us. Um, and apart from that, right, I want to go to the tavern district. I'd like to buy the tannery. Ooh, watchmen. Are watchmen worth having? Sure, let's recruit them. Let's recruit them, and let me just check the, uh, oops, not the town, sorry. But the garrison. Maybe we just drop them off over here, right? They're not, uh, take some effort to get them ranked up to a certain point. Let's dump them for now. Maybe when we're training the garrison of, uh, well, maybe when we're training the garrison of Charas, we'll, uh, we'll actually, you know, train them up or something. We'll, like, take them out and train them up. Uh, Dorian definitely needs some better equipment. He's terribly equipped. Let's go ahead and get you on a desert horse, buddy. And can we actually get you on... Ooh, chain bardic. Well, that's my chain bardic. Need to pick up some better stuff in general. Uh, Weapons-wise, what are you even good at? What are you even good at? Dorian the Scholar. Have you leveled up? You have. One-handed is kind of his strength. Okay, and riding. All right. Now, he does have a focus point. I could drop it into engineering. Go ahead and do that. Imperial fire. Okay. Uh, what should we give him here? Shield bashes versus handling increase. Oh, geez. That's not bad. Uh, let's go ahead and give him deflect. One-handed weapons you wield have their handling increased by 20%. Also, troops in the formation you're leading have their one-handed combat effectiveness as if they were one tier higher. That's interesting. 
Oh, no, I like this. Actually, Basher is better. So Shield Bashes now deal 50% more damage and stun your enemy for longer. Not that he's ever going to use that, but infantry troops take 4% less melee damage when in shield wall formation. Does that even apply when um, when he... I, I wish I could see it. Does that even apply when he's just following me? I don't know. Uh, strong arms for swing speed or to be blunt for damage with axes and maces. Hmm. Makes him a better governor as well. Sure, let's give him to be blunt. Increases your damage with axes and maces by 5%. Also, governed settlements gain 0.5 security per day rather than militia recruitment. All right, cool. And then riding, let's go ahead and give him vigorous extra horse hit points. Sounds good to me. Cool, so we want to make him one-handed on horseback. Again, he's not the greatest fighter, but, you know, he can at least train it up a little bit. He can at least train it up a little bit. I, I actually wonder if the focus should have been spent on his fighting skills. But, uh, but no, he's supposed to be an engineer first, right? Let's treat him that way. Let's treat him that way. So, one-handed. Now, I do have a one-handed weapon that I was eyeing earlier uh, to give him. If I just flip by value, and scroll to the bottom over here, I'm sure we've got some good... Yeah, we can give him a really nice piece of equipment. No, it's, it's, it feels kind of like wasted on him, doesn't it? Feels kind of wasted on him. Um, we'll give you the Fine Steel Paramarian. Sorry, I'm looking at myself here. I'm like, why are the stats so low? Yeah, there we go. Good stuff. A little slower to swing, a little harder to handle, but significantly better weapon. Not that he's going to get too much use out of it, let's be honest here. Or actually, let's give him the one-handed bearded axe. I feel like that's a bit more... Hitting, perhaps. Completely different weapon classes entirely, I know. Uh, in terms of a shield, I want to make sure he's got a proper shield as well. A fortified kite shield. Not a bad idea. He can't really throw or anything, but I could still give him javelin, so he has something. Or we could give him a, you know, lance. Not that he's, again, not good at it, but if it keeps him alive on the battlefield, if it keeps him effective in a slightly different way on the battlefield, then might as well equip him, right? So the Sturgeon Heavy Lance, which I actually kind of want for myself. But uh, he can have it for now. Or the Valanian Heavy Lance, we've got plenty of those. A Valanian Heavy Lance, shield to use with the Lance, the Axe, and sure, why not some throwables as well, right? When push comes to shove, or when when push comes to throw. Not, that's not how that works. <laughs> Something easy, like the Western Throwing Knife. Because if you're not good at throwing javelins, you're really bad at throwing javelins. Let's just give him some throwing axes. Make him make him axe focused for now. Uh, and in terms of his equipment, flip the value around. Find the highest value stuff: imperial mail over leather. Sure, I got the one of those. Bow's southern helmet with mail. You know what? Go with that instead. Make him feel like he belongs. He's been with the Asurai for long enough, right? This is good, this is good. Get him some nicer boots as well. There we go. Kidding our uh, engineer out for battle. Go ahead and get you, yeah. It's not from the same culture type, but it does at least feel right-ish. We need some lordly padded mittens. Damn, this guy's decked out way more than he needs to be, if I'm completely honest. But that's fine. He's, he's perhaps better decked out than I am. 20 versus 18. Oh, okay, guess not. It looks so much bulkier. Anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's a good start for him, I think. Done here. Let's go ahead and now we can walk around the... Well, no, not walk around the town center. But visit the tavern and, uh, and purchase the tannery. Head on out. And pretty soon we will be diving around fighting. Don't you worry, folks. We're going to get right on task. Oh, I'm here too late, aren't I? They're going to be closed. Too late, too early, you know, either or. There's no point looking. I, I can guarantee you they're closed right now. Yeah, it's the middle of the night. So we'll wait here for some time. And what we'll actually do is we'll trade here as well. Just a little bit. And I'll explain to you what I meant in terms of a slightly different approach to emptying my uh, inventory. All right. It's noon. Let's go ahead and hit up the tavern. Got quite a few people over here. I do wonder about picking up, um... Like, I, I feel like sending Elkiria out in, at the head of a trade caravan is not a terrible idea. Um, I also feel like... Where is the tannery? Tannery, there it is. I also feel like, um... 
hiring another companion is a, is a very good idea as well. What do you want to have done? Miss Partia. Craftsman. You've heard my name, that's good, that's good. Or do you need help with something? Um, you work from dawn to late. Can't sell your products at a fair price. Losses that I can only sell to local merchants. Now I'm not about to break the rules. Not about to break the rules. I just figured I'd, I'd check in what, what he wants, if it's something we can fulfill. Because down the line, it'll just help us recruit better quality troops, right? Uh, anyway, over to the tannery. Uh, as I was saying, I feel like, yeah, we can send Alkyria out as someone at the head of a trade caravan. Sorry. Um, I can... Recruit another companion, someone who's better at fighting, perhaps, or if I send Alkyria off, I should recruit a surgeon, and they'll be better at keeping our people alive. So I need to really think about that, and I'd be curious to hear your thoughts as well. How can you help me? I'd like to buy this workshop. Yes, it'll cost me some money. It's no big deal. I want to keep it what it is right now. Go on like this. Raw hide turns into armor. Sounds good. Do it. Hopefully it'll make me my money back pretty quickly. And again, I'm just establishing myself so that when we separate from the Asurai, we have some income, even if it's not the best. Now, over to trade. And really quickly, what I'm going to do here, actually, is rather than, like, go and pick and choose and be very, like, picky, I'm going to go low value. Sorry, low value. And there's so much stuff that we can just dump. And I'm going to dump a bunch of it that's, like, extremely low value that doesn't even need considering. I'm going to do it without any hesitation, without any thought. Because really, I'm never going to use some of these things, and they're already worth so much. And the reason why I want to dump like this is because uh, the amount of stuff we have... Look at that. Oh, we've got 32 commoners' tunics. I don't need to check my inventory to know I need to get rid of that, right? Rugged gambesons, things like that. This is going to empty out what we're just carrying wastefully. And at the same time, it'll also um, uh, make us some money, and it'll also spread the economic hurt right we can't we might not be able to dump everything at one place so this is a good way to make sure it uh this looks fancy Ooh. i don't mind that the silken band it sounds a little bit fancier right um with 62 merchants hats <laughs> but yeah so this will this will be quick it's not going to take very long for me to do um and again we'll spread the uh the the economic love let's call it just flooding this market with clothes yeah, there's so much hemp tunic, sackcloth tunic, ladies' shoes. I mean, I guess I could give those to Arwa. 163 Western cloth tunics. Now, I could even do it by amount. 216 commerce shirts, 186 straps. It's funny as well seeing these numbers. They're ridiculous numbers, aren't they? Buttoned leather bracers. They're so, like, pathetically weak. Tunic with rolled cloth. Hmm. Some fancier kind of clothes. Yeah, none of this stuff... None of this stuff matters to me. And we can do the same thing with our weapons as well. Oh, and you see, like, we've we've used up all of their money. And that might have actually happened a while ago. We've, we've used up more than all of their money. Oh my god. Go down to the bottom, I can pick up some of my stuff back. Ah, it's not the end of the world. No, show me the... No, I want to... I want to see... God damn. I can't see how much they're going to pay me. Oh my god. You know what? It's fine. I don't... I'll be honest, I don't care. I think I'm losing 2,000 on this, uh... It doesn't matter. We have so much money. Um, done, done. Yes, it doesn't matter. I, I believe it doesn't matter. Hopefully you're not going to tell me that I've actually lost out on, like, several million. But yeah, see, that's what I mean. If we continue to trade over here, these guys are broke. Uh, that's not a good thing for my own for my own place to have as an issue. Maybe I should buy some stuff off of them as well. Get some food or something. Pick up some... God, they don't have... Pick up some olives, sure. Another thing I want to do is as I go around uh, recruiting down south and traveling north to fight bandits and things like that, I want to also make sure that um, I'm picking up some goods that I think will trade decently up north. And I have a slightly different approach to um, how I intend to calculate my trades so that I'm not wasting so much time, you know, messing about with small numbers. Okay, linen, I should be able to sell up north, I think. Right. So what I want to do is I basically want to take a look at the 
I guess, highest price I bought it at. 66. Right, we bought 33 for 66. Um, and then as long as I'm selling above that, then I'm fine. Right, that, that makes sense. As long as I'm selling above 66, I'm fine. Now, I don't want to do like average pricing and things. I don't want to don't do the math, chasing after the mathematics. Uh, I feel like it'll make trading a bit more fluid. Clay, nah, everything else will, will, we're fine. And there you go, a little bit of money pumped back into the economy. Uh, I shouldn't drain the economy of my own holdings. <laughs> it's maybe not a good idea. Now, we can head on out and head down south. I do want to check out Thraktory. So again, Charas has 73 as a garrison, and it's so it's really it's quite the weak garrison. So I don't know if we should even count that 73. Charas basically needs to be worked on from the ground up. Yikes. What about uh, Thraktory over here? Now Thraktory honestly can be a slight bit weaker in terms of its uh, defenses because it's got. Um... Are you kidding me? Ottawa just got attacked. No way. She's roaming around with 103, so that's promising at least. Hopefully she'll be fine. She has managed to recruit troops, but God knows of what quality or anything. Oh man. Oh, you know what? I can always just check the garrisons over here. 52 at Thraktory out of 431. Alright. I like the... I like traveling though. Um, it just feels more real. Although I guess, you know, when you're a lord of lands, you get missives and you get updates sent to you. All right, but what's the deal with Ortizia? What do they have? Because Ortizia is going to be a problem for us. Ortizia is going to be a problem for us. Let's go ahead and upgrade these guys. It's so good to be able to just train by virtue of having these people march around with us. Let's go ahead and get some more soldiers as well, because that will mean we can take on more prisoners too. Great, this is working out wonderfully, actually. Because what we'll do now is we'll check out Ortizia, because I want to see what kind of an army I'll need to take with me. Like, what, what kind of an army I'll need to have access to? Over to Ortizia a little bit faster, please. There we go. Holy, 585 defenders. Now, their militia still counts. <laughs> well, I should consider their militia as a legitimate threat. 585, my god, okay. Suruk has made another army. Uh, this is such a golden opportunity to actually... Are you kidding me? Oh my god, Ottawa's been taken prisoner, that's... <sighs> These fools marching into battles, they cannot win. God, and, and what happened to, um... Baldum? he's still a prisoner. He's still in prison? He still hasn't broken out? That's wild. Usually it's pretty quick. That's a problem. That's a problem. Alright, uh, over at Garantor Castle, let's get this rover joining us as well. So we can get, what, nine more prisoners? Wonderful. Like I said, good timing, because now we can go to the dungeon, manage prisoners, we can get nine of you. Nine of you get to leave the dungeon, as long as you're below tier five. Go ahead and take a bunch of Imperial recruits, I suppose. Um, let's get these Batanians, right? And let's go ahead, because these guys are tier, what, four? Yeah. It'll take a little bit longer to recruit them, but it's something. And I'll also go ahead and get some of these Imperial recruits, sure. Start them from the ground up. Cool. It'll take time, but they'll join us. They'll join us, eventually. Head back on out, and head down south. So like I was saying, I'm going to go ahead, pick up a bunch of recruits. As I go around, I will pick up goods to trade as well. We've already picked up some linen. Um... I'm going to pick up some horses as well. That's always a good idea. And I want to... Uh, I want... Oh, it's so tempting. They're right there. I won't be able to catch them, will I? 5.7 versus my 5.3. Yeah. No point. Let's chase these guys down, though. They're heading the right direction. Um, just while we're in the area, right? Yeah, I'm going to pick up some horses. Pick up what? Like... Olives and things like that. What kind of a mission do you have for me? Once his daughter found. Ugh. I don't know if that's worth chasing after. Nothing. Familiar name. Quite a ways away. It's okay, we'll 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 take advantage of the work that our um clan members did. My steward continues to improve my athleticism though. Not a chance. Not a chance. Um 
go ahead and pick all you up. I know I can click recruit all instead, just force a habit. Let me see if I can't purchase anything over here. Probably have to go to Kuyas to buy worthwhile things. Now flax, yeah, it's not that much of an earning. Even Pen Canic only takes it for 21. Yeah, it's just not worth it. Marginal earnings are not my uh, world right now. Go down over here to Hiblet, pick up some dates. I'm pretty sure you can't grow dates in the cold north. Right? So this should be profitable. Hopefully. Sure. So we want to check out the... Alright, cool. 68. Buying 68 of them. Well, we're buying 25 of them for 68. Though, our people will probably just eat them all, right? I don't think locking actually stops people from eating. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out. Because it should. You, you'd expect people to understand, like, oh, it's locked away because it's meant for trade. They were buying 25 at 68. Still feels like small fry, on, honestly. Actually, some of those earnings can be quite helpful. Leave over to... Oh, sorry. Gotta actually recruit the troops as well. Sure. Working on relations down over here is not a terrible idea. The further away we get from our uh, holdings, the less ideal it'll be because we are... Um, it'll take us longer to be able to recruit troops from there anyway. Ooh, olives. These are... This is good. 92. Do we have... We have a bunch already. You know, I, I want to stop trading in food. It's harder to manage. Uh, but yeah, so improving relations with folks in this area isn't a terrible idea. Oh my god. Straight up Asteroid Archers and Skirmishers. What do you want? Family Feud. I'm gonna stick to the plan that I laid out earlier today first. Maybe we come back here to do some quests uh, in the next chapter. Y'all let me know what you think about that. Just in the nearby area. Oh my god. See, like, these great relations end up meaning nothing. Even though they're powerful... Their, uh, their good troops are too too far away. <laughs> Still too far away. Yes, sir? Are you... No. No quest or anything for me. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, but yeah, so let me know, let me know your thoughts. Because what we'll do then is uh, do some battling up north to train our troops up. And then when we come back here to drop them off at Garantor Castle, we'll continue down here, improve relations with these people. Because again, to explain my idea, uh, when I start moving down here to conquer these lands... I'll immediately have access to higher tier recruits in this area. But if I improve relations over here, it'll take me quite some time to get down there, which is why I'm trying to be picky about where I dedicate those uh, that time and resources in general. Over to Bunkaz, over here. Let's see if we can't recruit. There are some... I mean, holy... He's only influential, but he has access to Mamluk Cavalry, which is impressive. Uh, what can we buy over here? Anything worthwhile? It's all foodstuffs. And flax, I guess. Well, I suppose we could purchase flax, though I don't know if flax is... It's not worth it. So, so, such small numbers. How much further do I really want to go? I suppose I could go up to Sanala. And on my way back, I'll hit up Kuyaz. Though, maybe we head down south instead. I changed my mind, because there are desert horses and As Asurai war horses available in the area, potentially. So we could head down towards Uskar instead. If we can't pick up some uh, good horses to trade up north. At the same time, let's check out our check out our party. I do believe? Yep. More people want to join us. Good for you. Good for you. No one's leveled up yet. 98. So we're almost at our capacity. That's kind of what I want to do. Oh, look at that. See, Wahan. If I could improve my relations with these guys, and then when I get to here, it'll take some time though. You see how far away it is. When I do get to here, though, I'll be able to recruit some decent troops. Desert horses. I suppose I could purchase some desert horses. Asteroid horses as well. I mean, these are basically almost always guaranteed to make me a profit, if I'm not mistaken. Let's just pick them up. Six desert horses. I'm going to buy so many of them. I'm just going to go ahead and assume profits. Probably not a safe idea. Probably not a safe idea. I want to try and make this as kind of like fluid as possible in terms of uh, how much time we spend mulling over certain things like this. Um, the Tavern District, unfortunately. Dalai the alone. I really wish that we could get a good trader. If you look at Wanderers, you want to look for a spice, I forget what it was, a spice something. They tend to be the best, but I do not have 
Um, not Spice Trader. Is it Spice Trader? Uh, one hasn't spawned in my world, unfortunately. So I'm not able to get someone who's just naturally inclined towards raid. Unfortunately. Anyway, sorry. A minor distraction. Uh, over to trade. Or recruit troops. Give me either. Wow. Emptied. I mean, of course, there's a whole war going on. And honestly, emptying out the recruitment capabilities uh, helps weaken the Asurai against the Kuzate, which helps me down the line as well. So, 90 desert horses for 354. Yikes. They better sell well. Desert horses aren't the best horses, but hopefully they'll make us some decent money. We'll find out. And actually, what we could also do is around these parts, we can go back to trade. They've got 85k. We can go ahead and sell some of our... Uh, go by value, I guess. Or by quantity. Typically, you know, the more common stuff you'll have more of, so... Just dump a bunch of stuff. So much garbage we don't need. We've been carrying around with this pointlessly. Green hood. Ah, it's special because it's green. The tob. I mean, let's get rid of most of it. Keep one, I guess. That's my OG uh, equipment. I can keep a couple of these. Dump leather gloves, commerce tunic, western gambeson. Yeah. None of this stuff is really worth my carry capacity. And we can take a look at the uh, weapons as well, the same way, right? Pitchforks. Do I need 69 pitchforks? 61 spiked clubs? I mean, I suppose I can smith these, but uh, I have even higher tier stuff that I can smith. And remember, smithing doesn't have that same appeal as it once did. Don't forget that, too. There we go. And. Western long spears. We've almost drained them of all their money. There you go. Beautiful. 85k. Did we make all of our money back already from the trade? Done. Over a million. Cracked a million. Certainly feel like a merchant now. Take a look at our party here. Sure. Train you up. And pick these forest bandits up as well. Done. I can pick up even more prisoners. So here's what we'll do. We're at 104 right now. Uh, actually, let's go down to Zalem. Recruit some folks down there, and then we'll go up north and train. I think we've picked up enough numbers. We can maybe pick up some Imperial troops and stuff as well. Oh, so I don't think we're going to have much luck around these parts anymore. So, up we go. Up we go. Plenty of recruits to train up. Some more prisoners we can pick up as well and have them join us. Now, our earnings are... Not great. Not great. The Tanner... Okay, at least the Tanner's making us some decent money. That's good. Better than the Oil Presser. Nothing like those brewers, though. Those brewers continue to rake in the cash. Ooh. This congregation of looters, if I could just engage them, it'd be great. Ah, just the 24. Okay, we'll get them. We'll send the troops in. Might lose some, but might gain some experience as well. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Now, some of y'all were suggesting in the comments that I go back to our old method of leveling up, which is don't rush the upgrades, let the pool fill up. Um, fair enough. I suppose that makes sense since everything is low tier. The moment you start having, you know, an imbalance of low tier and high tier, what ends up happening is uh, the high tier units immediately start performing better, and so the low tier units see less action. So I don't know if it's a net gain or not, but uh, the, the theory makes sense. The theory makes sense. All right, up we go. It's available here. Indeed they are. And we'll see what we can trade up. That stewardship continues to rise up. We have food variety still. Yep. I want to pick up some more of something. Oh, 32 looters. That should be good training. I was going to go to Kuyas to pick up some goods as well, right? Might as well do that. Send the troops in here. So 32 might have been fun to fight. Lost a couple of Astra recruits. But yeah, look at that. Experience gain is pretty good. Good stuff. They're all... Like, most of our army right now... Where are our recruits? Look at that. <laughs> 49 Asurai recruits. Good stuff. The Valanian recruit, I mean, sure. He's not... This recruitment, this uh, pool is filled up, so we might as well get him training as a different unit. Five here, one here. Okay. It's so strange almost going, quote-unquote, back to the basics. It, it feels fun in its own way because it... Uh, there's a certain, in my opinion at least, there's a certain like weight to every move we make. Now it's not just a matter of like, oh yeah, whatever, it's fine. Uh, we actually have to be, you know, careful. Watchmen are useless, aren't they? Uh, we, we actually have to be, um, maybe careful is unfair. Uh, 
somewhat more aware of what we're doing. Oh, Valandian Courser. Doubt they'll go for too much up north. Am I going to pick up another 42 Desert Horses? They better sell well. <laughs> they better sell well. Um, I can dump a bunch of my stuff here as well. Western Short Spears, Blacksmith's Hammers. I do want to get a fancy hammer for my Smith as a weapon, though I don't know how, you know, powerful they get, Warhammers, or how common they are either. I want to find him a good Warhammer if I'm going to give him a Warhammer. It's been requested in the comments, and I like the suggestion. It's very in character for him, so I'm all for it. Uh, we can dump some of these sickles, rusty hatchets, splintered pitchforks. Because of the categorization, it's not always about quantity either. Rusty hoes, like we only have five of them, but they're certainly not valued more than, you know, even iron pitchforks. All right, we're good, I think. Pay 8,000, it's not too bad. Oh, there's probably more armor we can dump as well. Highland cloaks, added mittens. I'd rather keep the reinforced ones. Eastern leather boots, western acton, bam braces. I'll dump all the garbage. Burlap waist coast. Waist coat, sorry. That sounds uh, important. <laughs> we actually have imperial robes as well. Get that stuff away from me. Cool. We're like paying nothing here. We're like paying nothing here. I really should have done this by value instead. <laughs> sure, a couple more big things to dump. Done. Now we're making money here. Sure, good enough. Again, not looking to trade right down here. Now, if I want to enter the smithy, I just want to check something real quick. Where is Leothold? His smithing's all right. I, I need to like train him up, though, is the thing. I need to get hardwood and stuff. We'll, we'll do that. Soon. I really want to get some training done today. Like, training of troops done today. Uh, we are at 100 soldiers. 104 soldiers. Alright, up we go. We'll pick up some Imperials. Uh, again, my, my, my opening speech today suggests what Partia is thinking in terms of, like, look, as he leads an army, if he leads an army that is majority Asurai, people will be like, okay, he's Asurai. But if he's at the head of an army that is majority Valandian or majority just not Asurai, I feel like it sends the wrong message. It's like, oh, look, he's come as a foreign lord to take our lands. He's not Asurai. So that's what we want to avoid. So having, so, so we, we, will, we will still be training up uh, non-Asurai soldiers and, you know, making sure the army we lead is optimized in terms of all the troops that we have access to. We just want to make sure that the perception that our future... Um, <laughs> Uh, lords have, the lords under us have, is the right perception. Oh my god. I guess we're all marching to war, aren't we? Taking my soldiers just as well as any other. We might need to march up with what we have. Now, actually, hang on a second. Are my... There we go. At least we can pick up a couple people down here. Over to Gamadan. Are Valdim and Arwa still in prison? I did... I, I haven't noticed... A message of them escaping, but I should double check. There we go. 413. Now we should head north. I think this is good enough to start moving. Let's check. Sure, let's check seventh up. Don't wanna. Don't wanna short myself. Where are? Sorry, not parties, but members. Ottawa is still a prisoner. Oh my God! How dare you hold on to her for so long? Vicayon and Odok. Where's Vicayon? Somewhere around these parts, right? We at war with them? We got Legetta. Alright. Vicayon. Where are you? Oh. Where is Vi All the way over here. Alright, here's what we'll do. Here's what Wow, the Kuzate have spread really far, actually. Okay, here's what we'll do. We will... Go north, make some trades and things like that, loop down to Phaikaon, and maybe try and rescue our wife, raise an army for personal uh, purposes. God. I can't believe she's been captured. Hopefully she manages to escape soon, but I can't, I can't leave her captured like that. I can't leave her captured like that. If it was a small time thing, you know, if it was a temporary thing, fine, but this, is, this isn't, this is far from temporary. There we go. Some Valandians, some Imperials, and now we march north to take care of, uh, well, not hideouts. Though hideouts are a good place to 
stake out because people tend to attack you if you're near their hideouts, apparently. Oh, which is good intel. Hopefully, we can provide enough of a threat and uh, yeah, train some of these troops up. Come on now. 4.8 versus my 5.2. I'll be able to close the gap. And hopefully we'll also find bigger uh, clumps of them the further north we go. Sea Raiders and stuff are good targets. And let's see if we allow this to auto-resolve. Let's see how it plays out. Just send in the troops. 11 Mountain Bandits. How many losses are we going to take? Oh, hmm, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. A couple Bushwhackers, maybe. Go ahead and pick these Bushwhackers up. Brigands, I don't think I quite care for. Hillman. Maybe having some Brigands isn't such a terrible idea. Though, let's go ahead and pick up some of these troops as well. Good stuff, good stuff. Pick you up. Get you as well, and the two of you. Prisoner count's dropping a little bit. We'll pick more up. I kind of maybe regret my decision not to pick up those brigands, if I'm completely honest. All right, let's continue northwards. Trading and training. The two T's that we're trying to cross today. Stewardship continues to rise up. I mean, that's great. I'm not going to complain about that, obviously, because a higher stewardship means I can have a larger um, army or party of my own. Right? So, not going to complain about that. Go ahead and send the troops in for this one. I'm really hoping for larger uh, enemy groupings. This is why I wish, like, hideouts were done a little differently. I wish you could draw the enemy out of a hideout and force them to fight on an open field. Because that way, um, you know, those hideouts, the, the bigger, more filled out hideouts could actually be large battles, a good way to train up your troops and things like that. But unfortunately, that is not the case. Lots of forest bandits over here. Don't really want to pick fights with forest bandits, not, without un not with untrained troops. Uh, they'll just get shot up and killed. So, how are we heading up over here? Head up to... Dungallus is not a bad idea. Maybe we go up to, like, Rovelt or something. See if we can't sell off some of our horses up there. And then we'll pick up pick some fights with Sea Raiders. Sea Raiders are also quite dangerous. I want to see how Auto Resolve works against them. 4.8 versus my... 5.2. We should be good here. Chase them around a little bit. Valdim has escaped. Good for you, buddy. Hopefully you'll be able to find me. Valdim is at Galend. Valdem, where you at? Oh, I guess he's got to actually raise... That's the thing, you can't draw an army in. Unless they've got a certain number of men, right? Valdem, Valdem, Valdem. It's cost by zero. Yeah, I have to I have to bring him back in. Alright, I'll go seek him out. Because again, having him not uh, active on the field is just hurting me. Right. Just hurting me. Alright, let's send the troops in. I want to see what kind of uh, what kind of damage they do. The Sea Raiders against us. Just lost an Imperial Infantryman. Not too bad. Not too bad. Dorian's getting better as well. That's good. How about these Sea Raiders? Are they worth picking up? Ooh. Ooh, these are not bad troops. These are not bad troops. Training up Sea Raiders is maybe not the best call, but at least some of their chiefs and stuff. For now. Again, I'm trying to stay concentrated right now, because otherwise it's just all going to be a hot mess. Up to Rovalt. As far north as we can go to trade these horses. Go, oh, continuing onwards. And then as we loop back down south, we'll continue to pick up uh, you know, the things that we know sell well down south. The, uh, the thinking here again being, uh, we want to improve our trade skills as well, so we can eventually start purchasing entire settlements without having to you know, fight for them or anything like that. Crush these looters as well. Shouldn't be too difficult. I would like to get into a fight. I would like to lead a fight. They're they're fun. They provide a change of pace. Um, now it's good to hear your responses to the previous episode. I'm glad to see y'all enjoyed it. Uh, I was concerned because of the how different it was from from prior episodes. So it's it's good for me to to get a feel for what y'all are thinking. So keep that kind of feedback and information coming towards me, so I I know how to adjust myself. Because uh, it's role play. Half of it is role, the other half of it is play, right? We want to have fun. All right, let's go ahead and see. Moment of truth, right? Let's see here. The linens. Will they sell? Will they sell well? We paid 99. Sorry, 99. We paid six. I added the two numbers. We bought 33 at the price of 66. As long as we're selling above 66, we made a profit. 
a decent profit? I don't know. Dates. We bought 25 at 68. Yeah, see, the people have been eating them. But it's okay, let's sell what we have left. Yeah, not really going to make much. I'm really trying to adjust and fine-tune the approach to, to trading here. Desert horses, I feel like that's on average a profit. Oh, jeez, but that drops pretty quickly, eh? All right, what about asteroid horses? I mean, sure. But the more, you see, the more war, war horses are categorized separately, the hunter stays expensive. I want to keep my own war horses as well because I want to make sure we're able to, um, you know, train them up and stuff. Do you have good barding here? Chain barding. Yeah, I'll pick that up. Or Dorian here. There we go. Alkyria could... I mean, I like Alkyria with lighter uh, horse armor. Hopefully it keeps her out of the fight. But when her horse drops, it's bad for her. Sure. There. That's a fancy looking piece of armor. Uh, and let's go ahead and drop some of the desert horses off. I should have checked an average price. Try keeping it above 300. Still paying a lot, but... And anything else? Anything else? Nah, nothing else. Hmm. Yeah, I should have I kept a track on uh, on those horses. Or I should have bought more of other stuff. Um, let's head on over to the coast over here, see if we can pick some fights on our way over. We'll do some trading around these parts as well. Pick up some more. Ooh. 18 Sea Raiders, 16 Sea Raiders. These guys are en route. Chase them down. Yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. It's nice and crowded up over here. These will be some good uh, training opportunities for us. And we've done pretty well already, actually. If you look at our numbers, we've done pretty well pretty quickly. Send the troops in. Taking no losses, some wounds, lots of leveling up. Wonderful. Exactly what I need. Exactly what I need. Warriors. It's not bad to have access to... I should just go for it. Tier 6 units. Can't ever complain about tier 6 units. Pick them up. These prisoners want to join us. Let's go ahead and bring them in. They can start training up as well, right? Good stuff, good stuff. Now, any of these guys, yeah, that I should be training up. I should check this more often. Just so we don't have a lot of troops sitting around when they could be gaining experience at the next level up. Okay, done here. Good stuff. Take the loot. Moving on. 18 Sea Raiders over here. Come on, congregate. Work together. Work together. Oh, this might be better. Yeah. Ah. I was hoping we'd get more. Hoping we'd get more. Then in the troops. They should be helping my tactics as well. Ooh. Now we've actually taken some losses. Asteroid recruits primarily, but more losses than uh, than usual there. And sure, let's, let's pick these guys up. Especially the chiefs. All of you up as well. Yep. Any prisoners want to join us? Not yet. Maybe you all ready for upgrades? These Nomad Bandits, just a couple more that need leveling up. Doing pretty well though, 23 of our uh, Astra recruits have already leveled up. That's what, half of them, I think? Half of what we had at first? Not bad. This hideout is full. I wonder if those 15 will... Oh, well, I don't know if the 15 left, but the 13 over here are a juicy target. Come on now, come on now, fight me. Evidently going near a hideout doesn't quite help. And the troops in. Alright, there we go. That's good. Continue to train up. Sweet. Good stuff, good stuff. Pick up all the prisoners. Peasants can stay. How many soldiers have we got? 128, approximately. Not bad. Not bad, not bad. Come on. Let's do it. Taking some time, aren't they? Want to go down the Harami path, right? Yeah. The Vanguard Ferris. Stuff. The Valanian recruits. Sure, let's get you on the crossbows. Sure. Moving on. Let's all this loot up. What's the next city I want to get to? Karabanseth is a little... Maybe Varcheg. Sure, maybe Varcheg. I really hope I can offload those uh, those horses at a profit. Guys, ah, I could have struck him. 
It's like we gotta go down, around, and over this way, across the bridge. Sure. Not a problem to me. Dice has made an army. We gotta go and find our companions as well, right? Where is... Ottawa is still a prisoner. Galand. How far off is Galand? Galand is like down over here, isn't it? Oh, wait, actually... Let's do it the easy way. Yeah, Galand's over here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Pull back and pick him up. He came almost home. He came almost home. Fine. Down to... Well, we're up over here. I should pick up some stuff before I go down south. Otherwise, I'm wasting my, uh, my time running around. Pick up some hard wood. We know that'll sell well down south. And then we'll make our way over to Galland. Get Valden back out, back up on his feet. Make peace with the Southern Empire. We'll vote on that just to help our uh, relations. See what people are thinking and saying. So let's see, what can we pick up over here? And also, what can we drop off over here? Desert Horse, 438. That's gotta be profitable, right? Profitable. Words. Let's go ahead and buy your hardwood. Yep. So, we're looking at 104. Bought for, we're gonna say, 34. Wood, 104 at 34. That's gotta be profit. We can pick up some pottery as well. Oh my god. Yeah, you know what? That sells. That seems to sell quite well. So pottery, we're buying 37 at 83, we're going to say. 37 at 83. What else? Cotton, I don't think is worth picking up. Fur, ooh. That seems like a good price. We can get down to Kasira. Look at that. Profit. Oh my god. Fur, we're buying 23 for 161. All right, we're buying 23 at 161. Now we'll head down south to Galland and see if we can't make some money back over here. Oh, iron ore. Not the cheapest it can be, but it's pretty cheap. I should really head to Dunglanis. Now that's an old rumor, but there's money to be made there from the fur and maybe even leather. Leather's pointless, but perhaps the fur. Or actually, I should head down to Kasira. That's some serious profit. All right, cool. We'll do that then. We're heading down to Kasira, then maybe picking up some of these tools isn't a bad idea either. What else sells well? Ooh, hides at Sanala. We're making our way down. Sure. 21 for not for 100. Ooh, okay. <laughs> not as good as it first sounded, but 21 at 100. I don't think anything else is really going to make a difference down south. Everything else is pretty well produced down there as well, I think. Yeah. We're fine over here. Plenty of food. Food variety as well. Yes. Um, and I sold some horses as well, right, though? I don't know if that really worked out for me. I don't know if that really worked out for me. Done here? Yep. South we go. Over to Galand. All the way over here. Let's go. We'll, we'll intercept some uh, bandits en route. Looters and whatnot. But I think this training run went pretty well, all things considered. Pretty well. You know, Dorian's been leveling up. My troops have been leveling up for sure. Oh, this is this is good. Come on, come on, come on. At the same time. Oh, nice big clump. Oh, come on. This will be amazing. If we can catch them all. That's not bad. 30, 40, 50-ish. we fight this one? Yeah, let's 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 send the troops in. Fifty-three. Now send the troops in. Maybe I should have fought that one. Certainly one of the bigger fights we're going to see. Oh my god. Taking some actual losses. I should have fought that one. We lost a Mamluk uh, soldier. We lost two of them. God damn. Well, improve my tactics. So there's that. I, sh I should have fought that one. God damn. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Vlanian footman. Let's go ahead and get you Vlanian infantry, right? Yep. Recruits. Get you a footman. Looking pretty good, though. Looking pretty good. Go ahead and pick up all the loot, of course. And continue our journey. Jeez, come on. Finding a spot where I can move to is proving difficult. 
There we go. Over to Gotland. Again, I just I just need him. I need Valdim out and about sooner rather than later. Unless hold on a second. Valdim. I can kick him. I can't form an army with him last I checked. He's still stuck there. There's a little hack or something. Many people have mentioned that I should be able to form an army and he'll join me. But he's not available as uh, someone to call in. Is the problem. That's the problem. Ah, oh, crap. I forgot to vote. It shows you my, uh... The dissolving, um... Oh, what's the word? Attachment Artia has to his Sultan. Not getting involved in, in, in votes and things like that. The war continues, it seems. They're almost done for. Why stop now? Alright, over to Galland. We'll see what we can do here. Baldim, yep, he's been sighted here. Go ahead to the tavern. Bring you in, buddy. Eight watchmen, no thank you. There's some trade we can do here. I don't know if it's worth it, but separating our uh, spots for exports is not a bad idea. Fur does not sell well here. Hides. What about hides? Oh my god, no. In fact, I could buy more over here. Pottery. Uh, where is it? For 98? Uh, a little bit. Like marginal profit. Completely pointless. Fine. Food is looking okay. Everything's looking fine. Yeah, we're good. What about our horses? Sell a couple over here, I suppose. One. Yeah. Nothing worthwhile. But, over to our clan. Time to make a new party. Man, sending Baldim out. Sure, we'll do it. Gotta give him the right troops. Here's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and level up all these Asurai recruits and give him all the leveled up Asurai recruits. I think that might be the way to do it. And then we'll go back around and pick up some more Asurai recruits of our own. As long as he takes them down the right path. 31, jeez. I'd say we did a pretty good job there. These Mamluk soldiers, some of them can be Mamluk axemen. We'll give him them as well. So yeah, where are our Mamluk Axemen? Over to you. Mamluk Soldiers, 34. I kind of want to keep them and train them up myself. Let's give them the Asurai Recruits, actually. Imperial Infantrymen. Is he fine? 16 troops is not enough. He will die. He will die. Give him some Volandian Crossbows. Sure. And the Asurai Mamluk guard for him as well. Don't you dare get captured. That's the thing, right? It hurts to give him... Oops, that we spent time training. For the purpose of a garrison. Which is why I guess I'm keeping those uh, 34 or whatever. Jeez. Why'd you have to do this to me? Come on, Baldum. I think I can trust him with to survive with 20. God, I hope so. All right, done here. Send him off on his way. And we continue down south. Got some goods I'd like to trade out. See if we can't get down to, um, just anywhere down over here, this stuff sells for pretty well. Cause Sierra is pretty far away. I don't know if I want to go all that way, but again, we do have to pick up some new recruits as well, right? So. Okay, looks like Valdem's getting some work done, so that's good. I'm assuming that's Valdem, considering I just sent him out and he's in the area. Just don't get scooped up and pulled into this war. I wish you could give your clan, that'd be interesting, if you could give your clan separate orders of, like, get involved in Kingdom Wars or not. Really, you know, make sedition a part of the uh, the greater game. That'd be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. Any prisoners want to join us, actually? Yeah, got a couple of Bedouin rovers, a Nomad bandit, or two. The bushwhackers are starting to see the value of joining. These people are well fed, well taken care of. Morale is almost always at 100. Actually, I think morale has stayed at 100 for a very long time now. I would say I've done well to uh, lead these people. 
over to Seventh. Let's pick up some recruits over here. Why not? No reason not to. We know we have access to decent tier troops sometimes. Yeah, beautiful. See, that's that's going to become really helpful when... Oh, it's time to fight. Just after these looters here. Go ahead and uh, let's just take a look at our party. Oh, I can't. I can't even inspect my party. What do we have here? 87 infantry, 9 ranged, 8 cavalry. They'll do fine, I think. <laughs> They'll do fine. Hopefully we didn't uh, make a mistake here. Yeah, no, this is good. That was great. Awesome. Good training, good training. Honestly, might as well pick up some of these looters, right? Sure. Almost at our limit there. Those are Imperial troops waiting to be formed, though. The 10 Imperial recruits. We've got a few more that still need training up. Mamluk soldiers are doing well as well. Good stuff. Pick up all the loot. Continue on. Oops, over this way. Uh, I'm not going to pick up from Gamardan and stuff. Oh, more people are being taken prisoner. I really should go to Phaikaeon. I, I honestly anticipated Arwa would have been freed by now. But it seems the Kuzayt are trying to bait me into this war. Trying to get me involved so they can perhaps capture me. I'm the true threat. They know it. Peace with the Southern Empire. Alright, let's see what the Lords are saying. Here. I'll, I'll side with Thais. Ugh, even though it means siding with Kareth as well. I'll side with Thais to gain a little bit of um, love here at the cost of some with Ayalis. We'll have to find another way to improve our relations with Ayalis. We need to maybe find the owner of Uskar. Okay, we'll see if he needs any favors from us or anything like that. Let this war continue. Let it distract the Asurai lords. Alright, continue on downwards here. Southwards, I should say. Pick up some troops, hopefully. It's the war with the Kuzayt that really needs to continue on. Though not at the cost of my own uh, wife. Alright, over here, pick up some... Oh. There's not going to be any troops down here. There's not going to be any troops down here. Oh, hello. Spoke too soon. Over to Bak. I don't know if Kuyaz will be the ideal spot to trade any of our goods. Really asking for peace again. No tribute will be paid. That's questionable, actually. I just noticed that. Not really helping my relations, is it? Hmm. Not helping in any real way. Sorry, Bak. Yeah, some troops to pick up over here as well. Good stuff. The Shabel, let's check you out. I mean, I might as well check Kuyaz out for, for selling some of our goods. See if we can't make uh, some money here, right? Spreading the wares out is the best way to uh, maximize profits, after all. Let's see. What can we drop off over here? What have we got? We've got the fur that we bought for 161. Mm. Hides we bought for 100. Okay. Pottery we bought for 83. Okay. A bit more reasonable. Let's do that. The hardwood we bought for 34. Now we can make better money, for sure. Fur was for 161, eh? Sure, let's do that. And hides, 100. Sure. There are better numbers down the line, for sure. I want to I wanna make sure I save some for that. There we go. It's killed. Up in trade a little bit. That's what I need. I need that trade skill. Oh, I should have checked for recruits. Fool I was. A fool I was. Daily gold change is dropping as well. That's going to be the big thing that's going to hit us most. And while it feels like we have a lot of money right now, do not forget how much it costs to convince people to join us if relations aren't great. There are those costs to consider when the time comes. The time will come. When our, our coffers will be very drained. Very, very drained. How are we looking over here? Oh, looking okay. Yeah, still more training at this level, I think. Still more training at this level. Follow the Karakurgit. Five looters, not really a big uh, thing for me. Let's go ahead and see if we can pick up some more recruits over here. I wonder if I should drop off some of my... Wow, they're not leveled up enough. 
I want to level them up a bit more. Okay, over to Sanala. Hopefully we can trade some of these things. Typically, I think, if I recall correctly, Sanala has been a good place to uh, drop stuff off. He's constantly asking for peace. I mean, I could side with him, but I want the, the war to continue. I don't want to drop too much influence on it. Let's see if uh, a bit more influence gives us any gains here. There we go. Had to do a little bit more. Yeah, see, that's a, a significant difference. Well, significant. It could have been 24 if I had given that much support every time. Alright, come on. Give me some good numbers here. Give me some good numbers here, game. Hardwood. Wow, that is not a profit. I mean, it's a, it's a marginal profit. Pottery. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So we can go ahead and drop quite a bit of this off over here. Yep. But we can drop it all off. Good. Good enough for me, I would say. Hides. Oh, yeah. That's good, too. Wonderful all the way through. We bought it for 100. Um, fur, we bought for 161. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Beautiful. Profit all the way through. And what else? I mean, linen... Well, I can still sell the rest of this. We bought it for 66, so sure. Yeah, that's good money. Hardwood actually is not that much of a profit for us. Drop some of it off over here. We can find better numbers. That's actually, that's actually a good bit of money. Hopefully it'll help our... Yes, trade skill a lot. Nice. Nice. And then down over to... We can go to Kasira. Go to Kasira, pick up some more recruits. Top up. And then and then I should stop... Uh, um, Valdim needing some of my soldiers kind of threw off my, uh, my approach. My planned approach. It was going to be very easy mathematics. It was going to be go, recruit a bunch of people, wait until they're tier 3 or 4... Put them in the garrison. Done. Uh, but then having to give Valdim some of my troops has kind of thrown that off a little bit. Ever so slightly. Ever so slightly. Back over to Kasira. Come on now. Ferdinand now continues to improve her skills as well. That's great. I feel like uh, Valdim continues to get some work done as well, which I'm not going to complain about. Pick up some more troops over here. That's great. We're at 142. That's wonderful. Let's go ahead and drop off the last of our trade, hopefully, over here. Yeah, see, maybe, maybe I'm just misremembering how much wood is actually worth. But I'll take what I can get. Drop this off as well, might as well. We're not going to just carry silver around. We should pick up some more food, though. Food variety has gone away. Pick up some... Fish, sure. Don't mind if I do. And let's go ahead and pick up some... No, I'm not going to pick up beer from Kasira. Pick up some dates, perhaps, sure. And why not some... That's not food. <laughs> None of that down there is food. Sure, let's get the grapes as well. Money's not an issue. A little bit of food variety. Done. Doesn't help our trade. Well, it might have helped marginally, but... Marginal isn't necessarily what I'm looking for. Right, some Imperial trained infantrymen, Imperial crossbows, Bedouin rovers, and a looter as well. Cool, so we've got 144, 147 soldiers with us. Quite a few of our recruits are ready to level up. Our Mamluk soldiers are starting to get some training as well. And where are our Astra recruits? 28. I'm trying to figure out the best way to kind of organize this. Basically, I want to dump everything that I have with me into a garrison after I'm done and then do another round. Well, I say everything. I mean almost everything, obviously. I, want to march I never want to march around with nothing around me because you never know what's going to happen. See, Raider Chiefs are taking some time to get convinced, aren't they? But when we convince them... Be good. All right, folks. This was a very interesting session. This was even more different than the last one was to prior ones. Um, we did pretty well, I would say, overall in uh, in training. But definitely, I, I think staying in that. Let's leave Kasira for a second. I think staying in this northern area helps a lot because it's so densely packed with bandits and things like that that are easy to catch, which is also very important. Because down south, there's so many desert bandits that unless you're cavalry heavy, you won't be able to catch. Same thing goes over here with step bandits. So I think we should stay up over here in terms of training. Um, and uh, and hopefully next session, we can take the garrison at uh, Garantor Castle up by 140 troops. Uh, let's take a look over here. Our fiefs... No, sorry. I want to look at my... Col yeah, my clan. Parties, right. Yeah, if we add 140 to Garantor, 
and we remove all their cavalry, right? Keep that in mind. They must have like 30 cavalry or something. 140, 200, that's not bad. It's about half full. Hopefully we can do the same for Charas. I'm not too concerned about Thraktory Castle, if I'm completely honest. But once we fill up Charas and Garantor Castle, we might go in and uh, declare independence. <laughs> Wild to think about, but that time is nigh. Because again, ourselves, we can have 161 troops. Arwa, who needs to be freed as well. Maybe that's what we do, is like train our troops on the path to freeing Arwa. Um, she can get, I think, approximately 100 plus. So we're at 260 Plus another 160. About 500 soldiers. Hopefully we can get more people to join as well. I might need to get uh, someone else out there training more troops as well. It's going to be interesting. Because the garrison only matters so much. If we want to actually conquer more territory, we need, uh, we need more soldiers in the armies as well. Might need to try and find someone who has high stewardship. Just so he can have a bigger party. That's going to be an interesting challenge. But, for now, we're at Kasira, where we shall rest for the night. Folks, hope you enjoyed this chapter. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. As always, it makes a massive difference in how I approach content on the channel. Independence will take some time to declare, but it is coming. It is right around the corner. I want to make sure that I don't uh, find myself utterly destroyed when it comes through. As always, I look forward to reading your feedback, thoughts, and opinions, and stories in the comments, so do keep them coming as well, folks. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting this channel on a monthly basis to keep us alive and running smoothly. And a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, I bid you farewell.